All right, it's blinking. Let's start again. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures, Richie. Thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you. Nice uh, to be with you guys. Sure. Um, I gave a one-minute introduction earlier today, and I told the viewers that I would be interviewing you in Guayaquil. Am I saying it right? Gu Guayaquil. Guayaquil, Ecuador. And I forgot to tell them that we were doing this by way of Skype, which it, I've never done before, so uh, Lord willing, it will go smoothly, and we hope that the audience is blessed. Richie, what's the weather like in Ecuador? Uh, right now, this uh, during the winter time, it's usually very rainy, very humid, and uh, warm, very extremely warm. What about the temperature? Like, is it in the 90s? It's in the 90s. So you can hit a hundred uh, like a day. Is it humid or not? Very, very humid. Oh dear. A lot of rain. Torrential rain. It can rain for four days. No so kidding. Long. Wow. So tell us just a little bit about Ecuador. I know you mentioned going to the beach one time, and uh, right. I think you have quaint little villages there. Oh, very pretty. It's uh, very famous. Ecuador is very famous, especially right now with American uh, retirees. There's a lot of retirees living now in Salinas, Ecuador. Uh, there's at least 300 retirees from the U.S. living in Salinas. Mm -hmm. It's very quaint, very pretty mm -hmm. beaches. Uh, oh, I'll bet. We have great views surfing, the best surfing oh, waves. We wow. have, right now we have a competition in one of our beaches, mm -hmm. uh, surfing competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so nice. very pretty. There's a lot of cliffs, a lot of cliffs alongside oh. the beaches. Well, this is to the viewers. The reason I've asked uh, Richie to join us today is because he's a renowned musician, as I said before, and he plays lots of different instruments, and he does the nightclub circuit. Is that right? Yeah. And tell us some of the some of the songs that you sing. Like, what what entertainers' uh, songs do you sing? Uh, well, I have 45 to 50 years experience, and I pretty I very much cover just about everything. Uh, all the music from the United States, from the beginning, from the rock time till up uh, until now. I cover a lot of international music, um, Italian, singing Italian, a little bit of French, mm -hmm. Portuguese, and Yiddish, and uh, Jewish, uh, and other things, Spanish, of course. I mm -hmm. do cover all, most of the Spanish music, mm -hmm. uh, Latin American folk music, and uh, uh, let's see, a little bit of everything. A little of everything. And, uh, and where were you actually born? I was born here in Guayaquil, Ecuador, in 1950. And you spent a lot of time in Florida. I actually, we grew up, uh, my family, we grew up in both countries, United States and Ecuador. Oh, that's Many nice. Times we moved back and forth very often. Mm -hmm. I grew up in LA, California. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Keys, Ecuador, Guayaquil, mm -hmm. and then Miami, mm -hmm. Florida. Well, I, I want to say this to the viewers right now. Um, it's just so wonderful that this man is so talented, but the other part of the story is that he is a Christian, and uh, we're going to get into that just a little bit later, uh, about his affiliation with the church and the kids in the community and so forth. But back to uh, your career, Richie, uh, Frank Sinatra is, is one of the uh, guys that you, I don't want to say impersonate because that's really not a correct term, is it? Uh, well, yeah, he's my mentor for mm -hmm. part of the music that I love. And then, uh, within, the, within the jazz field. And Nat King Cole, I remember, was another. That's right. Um, all the, I'm a big fan of the crooners. All the crooners. Tony Bennett. And wasn't there one more? Uh, D. Martin. Oh, yeah, he was the other one. So, uh, you know what I'm curious about is, you're so talented, and when I watched you on the video on YouTube, <laughs> you were playing, you weren't using any sheet music. You were just playing, it was all in your head. Yeah, I, uh, music is in my head, in my heart. Oh, that's I just, weird. I, everything, all, all the music is already recorded into my, my so mind and heart. You, did you have any music lessons when you were a child? Uh, I did have some uh, music lessons in Canada, Miami. When I was 15, I took some uh, reading skills, uh, lessons in piano. But that's not very much. Oh my everything, I, everything I learned, I learned by myself and a lot of my uh, workmates in the United States, uh, which were pe people who were already graduated from universities. They were my teachers. 
So when you picked up the guitar for the first time, you didn't have a mentor there? You just yeah, start plucking my father, away? my father taught me how to play oh, guitar. Oh, that is nice. Well, yeah. so your mother never had to do what a lot of moms have to do and say, Richard, get in here, leave the ball field and get in here and do your hour on the piano. You never had to fight with your mom? To, wow. Oh. <laughs> but it's, you, uh, you, you can tell you I, just love what you do. Oh, I, I love it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love doing shows. I do a lot of shows. I mm -hmm. do Sinatra shows. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I love to make people happy, to interact mm -hmm. with it. With it mm -hmm. And I saw on Facebook that you wrote something like, when you can't say it in words, that music will speak for you, or something like that. That's, wow. that's correct. That's nice. That's the music play, yeah. And I also saw on some of your videos on YouTube that I, when the camera was looking at the audience, you could see on the people's faces they were that you just took them to another plateau or something. They just love the, the swooning and the what's that? The name of that fast when you ain't got the swing or something? It don't mean it don't mean a thing if you that swing. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. I love that. Mm. What's really nice about it is when I do those kind of shows, I interact with the audience, I get them worn up, and so we, we keep going back and forth and That's nice. just having fun with each other. <laughs> Did you ever see that video? I think it was Andrew Rue, if I'm saying his name right, and uh, he had the whole audience participate in My Way by Frank Sinatra. Did you yes. see that? It was incredible. Oh, yes. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. I remember seeing uh -huh. that. So, Rich, could I ask you some things about uh, when you asked Christ to come into your life? Okay, be nice. When did that happen? Uh, my uh, my uh, coming into Christianity was a very gradual, lengthy situation. I was Catholic, well, I was a race Catholic. Uh, while I was a musician, a professional musician, I was uh, pretty well, pretty straight about things in my life. Until um, 1979, from 1979 to 1984, uh, I, be, I became, uh, I walked into some bad things in my life. Uh, alcoholism, uh, cigarettes, they allow, uh, I, had, I was married and had girlfriends on the side, uh, drug addiction. And in 1984, I made a prayer, I was living here in Ecuador. And I asked the Lord, I was still Christ, a Catholic, but I was already being held by a couple of Christian pastors, and both of them Americans, by the way. Uh, one of them, one of the pastors was a pastor in the jungles of Ecuador. His name is, uh, uh, oh my God, I can't think of his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll, I'll think of it later. And the, these, these fellows got me going, they got me thinking about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I was not reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. So that's what got me started. Eventually, in 1987, I made uh, a very good musician who was also in the world, became a good Christian, and he, 1987, he made me come the full circle. Mm -hmm. and he, he made me do the prayer to receive the Lord mm -hmm. in 1987. And finally, 19, in 2002, I was passing a really big kidney stone in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I said right there, I said, I'm going to go all the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been in a church ever since, working, doing something in the mm -hmm. church. So you've had a real transformation. Oh, yeah. For I sure, huh? Wow. So tell us your church. What's the name of your church there in Ecuador? Uh, our church is called La Gracia. Okay. Our church is called La Gracia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pastor of Mike Stevens and his beautiful wife's church, mm -hmm. which is now in Puerto right. Rico. And uh, I was very lucky to meet Pastor Mike and his little wife, Sue. Mm -hmm. And I was turned out to the church, and I've been working with that church for years. So who's pastoring uh, the church now? Excuse me? Who is pastoring the church now? Uh, we have a, a, a local fellow from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Alfredo Barriga. Oh. He's a very blessed person, and uh, we're very happy to have him. Mm -hmm. And he's very, he's great to give us the word. Mm -hmm. uh, last night we had great information from him. Mm -hmm. Very. Did very, you ever he's, know? His heart is. I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. You were talking about his heart. 
Yeah, he has a very big heart for the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. He's very intense. His whole family is his son. Emmanuel is a very big to the music uh, mm -hmm. ministry in the, in the band. Mm -hmm. It's very tall. Isn't so, Guayaquil, Gua, isn't that where Pastor Glenn Sautel pastored a long time ago? Glenn Sautel? Glenn Sautel. Uh, Maybe it was before your time. Memory, I think he was at Guayaquil, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, I want to make sure we leave some time to sing. Do you have music to sing us a song or not? You didn't bring oh, any music? Sing huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Give us something in acapella. <laughs> Mama, you want to do Mama again? <laughs> Mama? <laughs> no, pick one. You pick a song. Amazing Grace. I don't, I don't remember those lyrics. I okay. forget it's so easy. I can do how I look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten on a tree. Feel like I'm playing on a cloud. I can't understand. Optimistically, too much in love. Walk my way. Walk a thousand violins. He can do play. <laughs> it's not the sound of your hollow. The music I hear. Optimistically, too much in love. Well, beautiful, beautiful. To cover just a couple of bars of Mama. I loved what you sang yesterday for your mom on her birthday. Oh, yes, man. I just finished it. the track. You were so happy. It was mm -hmm. like this. Mama, so down, so felice. Por que le tome me va bien. La mia canzone felice. La mia canzone felice. <laughs> Do you um would you like to advertise, uh put a plug in for your YouTube uh addresses? Do you have do you know them at the top of your head? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, please uh, look me up on YouTube. I am uh, under Richie Swan. Richie will be R I C H I E Swan as in Swan Lake. Please look me up. I love to have you there. I have a lot of videos there of myself, but I also have a lot of videos of my schoolwork, of my students. Nice. Of all my projects for the school. I have some wonderful students. Uh, we have a choir, we have a beautiful choir in the school, so. Now, didn't I, pardon me, didn't I see a picture of uh, the video of the choir on YouTube with Gloria? Yes. Is that a that's photo? Our, yeah, Gloria, my friend Gloria, she's a leader of it. She's a choir director. Uh -huh. She's also the director for the music department. Nice. So tell us a little bit more about uh, your church. I noticed in that picture that you put on Jim's website with the birthday cake, I noticed uh -huh. that you were in the back with a guitar or something. Right, no, I'm playing the keyboards. Are you I playing the keyboard at church? church. Okay. Uh, actually, I feel any, any position I have to play. If uh, somebody's missing, I can play bass, I can play uh -huh. drums or guitar. Uh -huh. So that was about say, uh, a few weeks ago, I sang a couple of songs. I'm a fanatic of uh, Elvis Presley in uh, uh -huh. a couple of things he did, like uh, Amazing Grace. I do his version. Uh, How Great Thou Art. I oh, do, do you ever listen like to those that. on YouTube? Do you no, e not. Elvis has all his Christian songs on YouTube. You ought to look them up sometime. Yes, he does. Uh -huh. He has a lot of beautiful And guess what? Yeah. Wow. Today I came across a picture of me with Elvis Presley, so I'm going to put it on the. I'm going to put it on Facebook, okay? Okay. okay. I want to see that. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, if I were to ask you in just a couple of sentences what you would say to the viewers who are sort of where you were in 1987, was it when when somebody spoke to you about Jesus? Right. And then you kind of were on the fence, and then you went through some terrible stuff. What would you tell that person or those people who are there today? Oh, okay. The fellow who put me, who, who brought me to salvation, his name is Steve Cruz. Steve Cruz was part of my band back in the 70s, and we were both in the world. And when he, he came, when I saw him, again, years later, Steve Cruz was already a Christian. And uh, he also, I, I understand that he's now a pastor. 
so I'm working with him. So he basically talked to me for many days before that mm-hmm. and prepared me for the event on 1987 when he, so he came over to my house. He lived two, uh, two blocks away from my house in Colorado and he came over and he did, we went full circle. So, and this is what I've been doing now. I, uh, my pastor, Mike Stevens, had taught me how to uh, evangelize. I've been evangelizing for a couple of years mm-hmm. in a parking lot, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I say to everybody, uh, go on the full circle, give yourself to the Lord, mm-hmm. accept the salvation of uh, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, mm-hmm. and, um, and uh, go all the way, learn how to uh, evangelize, because once you get started, you can't stop. It's just wonderful, it's a beautiful feeling. It's you funny did. that you just said that, but God is so timely. And it's uh, almost like a confirmation to something he just gave me, and I just put on Facebook about an hour ago, uh, that when Pastor Shubelli gave his message last night, uh, well, I won't tell the whole thing, it would take too much time, but I got a rima from the Lord through his message, and it was about evangelizing. And uh, he thought something was wrong with him because he always wanted to move on. He was itching to move on to other places. And this is going to sound funny (laughs) to whoever's listening, but I am planning to move for my 39th time. And I call myself a gypsy for Jesus. And uh, I think my family members might want to have me committed at this point. But, you know, after I'm someplace for uh, two or three years, I get itchy like that too. And if you would ask me where my element would be, for me to be in my element, it would be right what you just said, in the parks, evangelizing in the parks. Of course, I have a really bad back, and I can't do it like I used to do it. I can't do the doors anymore. But that would be my element. And to go to all the countries. uh, As you know, I was overseas in a third world country. And I would take two Bibles a day in my pocketbook because I had to be really careful there. But I was in my glory. It really was so. I so I'm happy for you that you're doing that. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's basically the park where we go to do it. It's most of the people in the park that are very poor, oh. the poor world type of situation. Uh-huh. And believe it or not, Ecuador is actually a, a first world and it's a third world too. So we have everything. Uh-huh. And we also have a lot of poverty and um, mm-hmm. not only greater physical poverty but also mm-hmm. uh, spiritual poverty. There's mm-hmm. a lot of issues we need to resolve in this country. Mm-hmm. So we need a lot of prayer. We will be praying for you. And I hope that that the viewers will pray also for Ecuador. I'm missing uh, Pastor Pastor Mike and Sue. I haven't seen them uh, because I haven't gone to the convention in three years because of my back. But I used to buy a pocketbook every year, the one that the pocketbooks that the peasants made. And they would bring them to convention every year. So I didn't get one last year. (laughs) But that's okay. I'll get one sooner or later. So I'm looking at my clock here, and I think I'm going to save the extra few minutes to uh, video one of your YouTube videos for the audience, and I'm going to precede this interview with one of your songs. <laughs> How does Thank that you. sound? This way they'll get to, they'll know you a little better before they hear your story. Okay. How does that sound? Thank you. So, Sounds beautiful. <laughs> to wrap it up, I'm just going to ask you, do you have one Bible verse that's kind of a life verse for you? It's uh, your favorite, maybe? Or are you hard-pressed <laughs> to pick oh, one? Yeah. I have too many. You have too many, okay. Uh, I have, uh, uh, the, my, I guess the most important is that uh, Psalm 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I would say 27, mm-hmm. 25, 27, 91. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2 Kings 23. I like that. Mm-hmm. It's famous. Mm-hmm. Well, the other thing I forgot to tell the audience is uh, how we came to know each other, and that is through our mutual friend. Uh, Jim, who stayed with you in Ecuador for a few months this uh, winter, and it just kind of evolved, and it's like, uh, it's, it just seems so wild that you're in another country, and here I am here, and yet, because we're Christians, that our lives are so parallel because we're both public figures and, and all that, and uh, I feel like I've known you all my life, and uh, I, <laughs> so anyway, thanks. Uh, so I'm going to leave the rest of the time to squeeze in that video. So with well, that, you. I want to say thank you so much for joining me today, and maybe you can do it again sometime next year, maybe? 
And you guys in Ecuador pray for me, and if I get healed, I will come to Ecuador, and then you can interview me down there. How is that? <laughs> All right. We have a deal. I shall. I shall. So God bless you, my friend. God bless you, Thank you, everybody who's listening, and many blessings to all my brothers and sisters. And God bless you. This program. God, bless. God bless you. I'm going to turn it off now, and but don't you leave me now. Just stay there. I'm going to turn off the camera.